Mr. President, I want to thank the leader for his strong words about the importance of making sure that we advance our military leaders when they have been approved for promotion and pay increases. You know, most people are aware that the Senate votes on nominees who have been appointed by the President to occupy top roles in almost all parts of the federal government, cabinet secretaries, judges, ambassadors. Less well known is the fact that the Senate must also vote to approve thousands of military promotions every year. So if a colonel has done well on the job and their services promotion board decides that they're ready to be a brigadier general, the Senate must vote to approve this promotion before it can go through. Now, typically, this vote is a formality. These promotions are processed in big batches rather than one at a time, and they usually happen without even taking a recorded vote. But right now, the senator from Alabama has imposed a hold on all, every single senior military nomination and promotion. That means that one senator is personally standing in the way of promotions for 184 of our top level military leaders. One senator is holding up pay raises for men and women in uniform. One senator is blocking key senior military leaders from taking their posts. One senator is jeopardizing America's national security. Think for a minute about what this looks like. These holds deprive military families of the pay increases that they've earned because the nominee's new pay cannot take effect until the promotion goes through. Without formally being assigned to a change of duty, Families can't make decisions right now about moving or enrolling kids in a new school for next uh, school year. The Chief of Staff of the Army has said, quote, what it really does, it affects the families and some of the kids and they're trying to figure out where they're going to school, where they're going to move, and all those things kind of come into the readiness of the force. For families with special needs, there may be even more significant delays to access important services. Secretary Austin has stated that this delay, quote, creates a ripple effect through the force that makes us far less ready than we need to be. So why is one senator, one senator, punishing 184 dedicated men and women who actively serve in our military, all because he personally disagrees with a single policy decision from the Pentagon. Now look, it is no secret that I disagree with a lot of policy decisions from the Pentagon. And as senators, we have a lot of tools to shape and influence government policies, tools that we can use without putting our national defense at risk. We can pass laws. We can conduct oversight. We can meet with administration officials. We can hold hearings. Occasionally, a senator may object to an individual nomination, usually to indicate opposition to that appointment or to insist on answers to questions from a federal agency. I've done this myself in the past, as have many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. But that is not what the senator from Alabama is doing. Instead, he is blocking every single top military leader from advancing indefinitely. He's snared all 184 top-level service members who are currently slated for advancement, and he stopped every single one of them dead in their tracks. Like me, the senator from Alabama serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee. And as a consequence, he has many more opportunities than most senators to influence DOD policy. He has many more opportunities to question witnesses, many more opportunities to receive briefings, and many more opportunities to influence the annual defense bill that Congress passes every single year to govern Pentagon operations. He has many opportunities that do not actively threaten our national security. 
He has not raised any individual objections to the 184 service members whose promotions are now held up in the Senate. And he has not raised any objections to the process by which these men and women were vetted and nominated. No, the senator is blocking 184 top military promotions because he disagrees with the Department of Defense policy to help service members and their families access needed health care, specifically to travel to access abortion care. Now, I disagree with the senator on that issue, but if he wants to press for votes to reverse DOD's health care policies, he can do that. I will oppose him, but if I lose and if Congress changes the law, then DOD will change its policies. That is how democracy works. Holding up the promotion of every single military nominee isn't democracy, it's extortion. And that kind of extortion has serious consequences for our national defense. These holds pose a grave threat to our national security and to our military readiness. They actively hurt our ability to respond quickly to threats around the world. Just take a look at the list of 184 people who've already been approved for promotions. The 184 people that the senator from Alabama have blocked so far include nominations for the next commander of the U.S. Fifth Fleet in the Middle East, nomination for the next commander of the Seventh Fleet in the Pacific, our next military representative to NATO, and the current director of intelligence for U.S. Cyber Command. It includes our next deputy chief of staff for strategic deterrence and nuclear integration for the Air Force. It includes a top official in Birmingham's Army Reserves. And it includes the former chief of staff for Operation Warp Speed, a program the senator from Alabama has repeatedly credited for saving millions of American lives. In fact, the senator from Alabama is single-handedly holding up 11 three-star commanders, three recipients of silver stars, and three Purple Heart recipients. These are brave service members who deserve better than to be stuck in an administrative hell waiting for a single senator to release them to the promotions and the assignments and the pay increases that their military leaders have determined that they have already earned. The Department of Defense has warned that these blanket holds are making the United States more vulnerable to threats from foreign actors like China, North Korea, and Iran. In the coming months, approximately 80 three- and four-star generals and admirals, including the leaders of the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps, will reach the end of their current terms, and new nominees will be slotted to replace them. In addition, if the senator's reckless hold is not lifted, and if the Senate cannot confirm a new chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the president may be without a principal military advisor. By the end of this year, we could have 650 general and flag officers waiting for Senate confirmation. The senator from Alabama's response to his actions is to say that he will keep these holds in place, quote, until hell freezes over, unless DOD changes its health care travel policy. I sincerely hope that is not true, because holding hostage nearly the entire military leadership of the United States of America at a time when we are facing military threats around the world and our allies are literally engaged in war in Europe is dangerous, it is reckless, and it needs to stop right now. 
As chair of the Senate Armed Services Subcommittee on Personnel, I care deeply about protecting our service members and the integrity of our promotion system. These holds are depriving families of pay raises that they have earned. We're talking about grocery money for families. These service members are being treated disrespectfully, people who should be treated with dignity and respect. And unless there is some specific problem with an individual nominee, those who have been nominated for a new rank or a new post should get the advancement that the Pentagon has already recommended for them. No more politics. I am here today to respectfully ask my colleague from Alabama to let these promotions move forward and to find other ways to continue advocating for the policy changes that he wants to see. I am hopeful that he will set aside politics and do what is the right thing and allow these service members to carry out their responsibilities to our nation.